and a welcome back to a Valorant First Strike Europe, where Summon FC have just booked their place in the semi-finals after beating Pearl Cobras. As you can, as you guys can see, I am joined by their IGL Boaster. Boaster, welcome to the show. Congratulations. I have to talk about that bind, Matt, because I think you have just changed the game. Everyone is super excited. You had Pansy and Lotha literally claim that there was one of the cleanest games they've ever seen. So talk us through what went through your mind. Uh, honestly, um, our bind was looking a bit rusty coming into this tournament, but uh, we focused on it the past two days and somehow it just, we were just, we just cleaned up. Like we had me and Minnie going at the boys, like you gotta be reactive. You gotta be doing this. You gotta be like, and uh, luckily the boys listened and then they just aimed. They just out aimed our opponents and it was it was looking pretty tasty, yeah. Mm, I think there are definitely some talks now on whether Mystic could be the best Viper in EU, uh, which is a very, very tough to uh, title to match. What did you make of his performance? And also Doma on that omen. Yeah, Mystic, he was uh, unreal, let's just say. He pissed around three kills, he, and then he was like, yeah, I knew from then I was going to pop off. And I was like, damn right you are, son, with me supporting you. Flash, flash. But um, <laughs> as for Mystic, uh, as for Doma, sorry. Yeah, Doma on Omen, Lau, he's like, obviously Doma's a raised player, and you saw him in Haven, like, pop off. But uh, to switch him onto Omen for the team is, like, just what we needed. Like, um, it's just a good team player, you know? I asked, yo, Domi, can you go home? And he was like, no. And I was like, all right, never mind then. But, uh, we managed to get him on it eventually. And uh, yeah, it worked out. Mm. It was looking nice. Well, Purple Cobras did challenge you guys a little bit more on Haven. Uh, talk me through that one as well. I don't think you guys probably expected them to be as good, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, uh, pissed around. I had to change it up a little bit because I was like, our current T pistol probably won't work against them. And I wanted to do a bit more like manipulation around the map. Um, and then it came to other rounds. And um, yeah, I think it was a slight hesitation from us at some points during the strats when they were throwing like stuns and nades at us. Uh, not nades, sorry, just stuns and uh, recons and flashes. But um, overall, CT side, I knew we'd uh, clear up because we're quite solid on CT side. Added a few more stuff in for a... a for whoever we play next. I was going to say Angel then, but like, um, but yeah, Haven, yeah, I mean, they, they, Purple Cobras did play it well. Um, I, f I think I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do in 2021. And yeah, I'm just pretty happy, pretty happy, chilling. Mm. And speaking Ready? of Ready? Angel, uh, you in the semi finals. <laughs> 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 that reminds me of Pugs um, in League of Legends, oh, really? if, if, if anyone has ever seen Pugs do that. Um, but Boaster, speaking of Angel, you'll either play FPX or no Penky in the semifinals. Is there a team you'd prefer to face and why? FPX. Uh, no offense to no Penky. I mean, I want to play everyone. If I could play everyone in this tournament to prove what, uh, like, uh, that someone are good, then I would. But um, obviously, I'd love to play FPX because the last time we played them, they beat us 2-0, 13-9, 13-9. And we weren't even ready then. But we're ready now. And uh, I want to give uh, Angel a good spanking. Well, Can Angel, <laughs> if you're watching, well, you already said it, so it's a bit too late. Oh. <laughs> um, but Angel, if you're watching, you know, Boaster has said it. He's challenging you guys. Uh, and thank you so much, Boaster, for the interview. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Boaster. It's always a pleasure to interview Boaster, you know. Uh, he loves doing interviews, so it makes my job a lot easier. Um, he said it there. He wants to face FPX. Uh, I'm not going to repeat the exact phrase he used uh, in regards to Angel, um, but <laughs> I think that is a pretty hard challenge. Uh, you know, after what they did today, uh, how much of a chance and what are their win conditions, do you think, if they were to face F FPX? Hmm. Before saying that, I would love to see how FPX will play, you know, because mm -hmm. this is a there was a huge gap between the qualifiers and now the main event. And an example, Salmon looked completely differently in those games today than we have seen them in qualifiers. So before, you know, before the, seeing this match, I would say probably Salmon going to lose to FPX. But now I'm like, hmm. This is going to be a tough choice, you know? I'm wondering what kind of a form will FPS present to us before making a judgment. Mm. Well, I mean, it, it speaks volumes. Angel's gone on record and said Summon FC are like the hardest 
they've ever been pushed as a team. Um, and to say that, you know, you know, we weren't ready for buying, they come out, put on that absolute masterclass of utility and, and setup was, it's kind of scary to think now. I'm, I mean, no wonder he's absolutely buzzing because, <laughs> but feel as if they're ready now, absolutely go back, redeem yourselves, top of FPX. Mm. Well, before we move on to the next match, I do want to talk about Purple Cobras because uh, on Bind, it was a bit unfortunate. I think Summon were probably just the better <laughs> team. Um, but on Haven, they showed some good stuff, Lothar. What did you make of their performance? They played on Haven the way they played in the qualifiers. You know, they moved aggressively, they had map control. Something that was a trademark for them was pushing aggressively on every single map to maintain, maintain control. So they played like a reverse um, attack and defense positioning, right? Because when they were playing defensive, they were just pushing to get um, aggressive, uh, to, to show an aggressive stance against their opponents. But against, against Summon, that just, that just doesn't work, you know? When they play five non-dualist champions, they have so much map control, so much utility to work with, that they just crushed Summon on, uh, sorry, crushed Cobras on, on Bind. And because of that, I felt like Cobras didn't feel confident in their own playstyle on Haven. They paid the price because of that. Mm, well, um, you guys voted at home. I just want to quickly reveal that the HyperX player of the series is no surprise, Mystic. Definitely well deserved. I mean, this pistol round alone for me was absolutely insane. Uh, Hypoc, just take us through, through Mystic's gameplay again. I mean, it was disgusting. Uh, again, just the innovation and the way in which the. Viper utility is used and then the other agents kind of synergize around that. I mean, both of them was talking about the flash out from Lamps time and time again. The, the timing was perfect on that. Um, it absolutely deserved. Again, uh, sacrificing the utility on the way in on the execute to pull things like this off in the post plant. This is like month one and two brimstone kind of plays we saw with the uh, Molly. So uh, absolutely deserved. I mean, it was a standout performance, but to come and pull that pocket pick and, and make it that make it look that good was just insane. Mm, yeah, well played, Mystic. And, uh, you know, Boaster was getting ahead of himself a little bit, saying he wants to play FPX, but FPX would have to beat Noel Penky first. And that is a not an easy feat by any means. Uh, we are going to have to head to map beaters quite quickly. So, Lothar, I'm going to let you make one point about... Okay, one point about yeah. Noel Penky. It was actually very close to Noel Pinky not being here. Yeah, In the yeah, qualifier, yeah. they played against Enterprise, who it went all the, it went all the way. They played split as a decider. In an 11-11 scoreline, Noel Penky was two versus five in a post plant situation, and Enterprise didn't close it. If they would have won that round instead of throwing, unfortunately, <sighs> I don't think Noel Penky would have been here. At 2v5, seen it, and um, I have Aaron, if I remember correctly, seen it, and Aaron pulled it off. That was insane, absolutely insane. Noel Penky just went ecstatic after the round and closed the match on the next round. So this would have been the other way around if Enterprise would have actually had that round 5v2. Mm. Well, Hypog, you know, no Penky an unsigned team, but if we're going to go by what Summon managed to do, we absolutely cannot underestimate them just because they're unsigned. Um, what, how do you fancy no Penky in this FPX matchup? Because a lot of people would say that FPX are the best team in Europe right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I personally would lean that way as well. Uh, no Penky, you can't write them off. That, that's the one thing. And even when we look back when Vac was on the jet for no Penky and before Xena came in, there's the two players that I mean, you just use an example there of at any moment, you know, somebody can dig deep and find three or four kills in one round. Um, and again, you, as a team, you never want to rely on that. I think um, the polar opposite, if we're to talk about it, the contrast really of the way Summon just played there, it wasn't relying on individual performances, it was relying on everybody, you know, putting a piece to the puzzle, so to say. Um, so that's definitely a huge factor for Noel Penke. The concern is always, you know, if one of these huge impact players has an off game, um, how heavily does that impact their performance? Well, you, you let's say when someone kind of tries to put a, 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 a specific reason why Noel Penke is winning, typically I hear, oh, Cena is carrying the team. When in reality, it's actually kind of split because right now, from what I remember, Zeke has the highest yeah, average combat insane. score, 276 yeah. from what I see on my notes. But not only that, he is holding the highest average KD per game from all the qualifiers. It's over 20 frags per game. So he's popping off, you know, mm -hmm. he's popping off. He, I feel like he's the glue for the team. He's also the IGL. Uh, the team is fully international. So they play with different communications when you compare it to other teams that might play, you know, with all the native languages. But in general, um, there's also VAC. So they have like those three possibilities of someone popping off. 
and just having an insane, insane game. Yeah, I, I think on the flip side of that, just to talk about FBX for a second, I, I, the reason I feel this is kind of weighted their way is, is the discipline that Angel brings to this roster. I mean, we talk about him having one of the biggest brains in EU. Mm. Um, I, I think he's kind of conditioned this team now to be well prepared for a team like that. You know, mm -hmm. the individual performances aren't going to be a big factor against a team like FBX. So, I mean, there's going to be a few that slip through the net, but um, FBX, I think, you know, are the perfect counter to the things we've just talked about. Mm. Uh, I absolutely agree with that, Hypog. Um, I think just before we move on to Matt Vitos, honestly, watching FPX play, watching even, though, yeah, <laughs> even though it's a replay, I am beyond excited. I, I think this is going to be a very, very good matchup. And I do think that after the other big teams in, in you, what they've been able to do, I think FPX do need to step up. Uh, but now I like to move to the map. Vitos, right mm. off the bat. No Penky have banned Icebox and FPX banned out Ascent, which means Bind will be first. You guys, Angel saw <laughs> Mystic and he said, do you know what? Everyone is saying Mystic is a better Viper than me. I'm just going to come and prove them wrong. Uh, we already know that FPX play Viper on Bind. They showed this before and it was Angel on the Viper, of course. So that's going to be an interesting map. But then we have Split and Haven. Lothar, what are your immediate reactions to these uh, map selection? To be honest, I feel like uh, with FPX, I don't think they have to worry about any maps. Yeah, they have such I a agree. wide map pool. They play whatever. I wouldn't be surprised if they wouldn't even wanted to play Icebox. Noel Penky on the other side, I know that they have to put a lot of effort to prepare on maps just because of you know the, the language barrier they have. They need to talk a little bit more, have more playbooks prepared to play well on a map. They cannot... Even though I feel like on a personal level they are very up high when it comes to skill and can play an improvised uh, playstyle like G2, an example, but because of the language barrier that they have, they cannot play off each other so well like other teams. Yeah, I, I think Lothar makes a really good point. That that preparation kind of feeds into uh, FPX's versatility in terms of the map pool. Whereas Split, I mean, you know, the polar opposite, really. You can let a jet, <laughs> a jet run wild on Split. And obviously, if you have a raise to complement that, we've seen time and time again how well that works for teams. So I uh, definitely agree with Lothar there. And FPX are going to be better equipped to in terms of, you know, defaults and stuff mm. um, versus... Uh, no, Penky. Well, with the map information in mind, who are you guys backing for the not just the map, but the series? Oh, the series. Hmm. Mm. <sighs> you know, that's actually my brethren playing in in Noel Penky, a Polish player. The Zika uh, yes, is the IGL, so <laughs> my heart says I should go with Noel Penky for this one. But I would say that probably FPX just because of their experience, because of the 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 approach of the game that they have, probably would favor them. But I'm hoping for an upset because, mm -hmm. you know, this would make this series interesting. I really hope we don't get like a stomp from either side. Yeah. You know, I just hope this is going to be a close match, maybe goes for the third map or something like that. I would love to see that. And, and just kind of to learn what those two teams prepared for the tournament because it's always cool to see stuff like an example Salmon showed in the previous series. Exactly. Hi, Pop, what about you? Uh, I mean, for me, for day one, I've been foaming at the mouth to see Zipan play. So for me, it's, <laughs> it's FBX all the way. Uh, what I want to see a 2-0. Um, but again, just coming back to, you know, the way in which Angel approaches the game, I think we, we might see some very Summon FC-esque things Ooh. pulled out in this series. Um, again, uh, I just want that to continue. I want the geekiness to continue from now on after we've seen that previous game. I love how you're now saying Angel's going to pull out Summon FCS. Hey, he's going to follow when, suit. I'm when it you. would be the other way around, like Summon actually pulled out very FPX-esque things, I would have said. Hey, they're the masters of it now, I'm telling oh, you. Summon yeah. FC are the masters of it, hands down. I love that, Lothar. What do you think? Um, just wanted to put one more thing about FPX. When you compare them to other teams, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they have the smallest minimum and maximum average combat score difference between their players. All of them have a score over 200, but it's very close. It's ranging from like 260 to 220. So every single player is pulling off massive weight for their yeah, team. Yeah. And there's not a single one that is like, oh, this guy just carries the team. He has the backpack. Everyone else sits in it. And that's just it. FPX plays like a team. Well, it's an interesting point, too, because I, I think in terms of individual impact, Meadow is one of the most impactful ciphers alongside, you know, Pora. I'd, I'd probably compare him to mm -hmm. kind of that Pora mm -hmm. role. Comes up clutch time and time again. But even opening up rounds, you know, we saw it in some of those clips there, you know, one, two, three kills in quick succession. 
some other things. I mean, you compare it to a pit sometimes. It's a more passive kind of uh, setup, usually. Um, so a, a huge fan of the way Medai plays that role. Mm, well, speaking of Medai, let's ahead to Agent Select and see what they have picked for Bind. You know, I am expecting to see that Viper. Uh, other than that, I don't think there's going to be that <laughs> many upsets. Uh, okay, we're waiting a little bit longer for Agent Select. No, we're not. We are back <laughs> into Agent Select. Um, Interesting stuff already happening. Oh, yeah. Um, Look at CNET. He's on race. That uh, Vac returning to Jet. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know that is. Yep, it's he selected it, and and I know that's a quite interesting on a map it where is. you know uh, when when FPX is uh, comp isn't going to be the most surprising Ang thing. Angel's trolling us right now. Yeah, he's he literally is, trolling us. He's heard you call him out, uh, Hypok. He's heard that you've just said that Angel's going to bring out summon FC esque things. <laughs> um, he's going to make us wait a bit longer, but it should be the Viper. Uh, although with FPX. We, we just can't assume, can we? Because they're always ahead of the meta, but they're trying to be ahead of the meta. They're trying to create. Uh, maybe today we see something different. Well, this is the thing I was talking about. Is, is that kind yeah, of... Yeah, there's a Viper. There we go. Oh, yes, I was yes. saying, <laughs> and the FPX is another team we can throw into that kind of hat of, you know, kind of future-proofing and remaining... Well, yeah, like you said, one step ahead um, and, and kind of keeping fresh ideas, bringing it in. They're not they're not afraid to try new things. Um, and this is a perfect example once again. Again, a little bit of a variation from Summon FC. Uh, haven't got the secondary smoker, but, you know, maybe we're going to see some, something funky with some double walls with obviously Sova combining with that. Mm, of course, Shao on Phoenix too. I get yeah. very excited every time Shao plays Phoenix. Um, he, for me, I know Zipan is uh, the player that a lot of people will look to, and rightfully so, but for me, Shao is just so scary. He Shao is actually scary. High, has a higher score in ACS than Zippen oh, by there seven. We go. <laughs> and his KD is higher, obviously, because he's not typically the first player on site. Mm -hmm. So he has 1.9, while Zippen has 1.4. But Zippen is known to just breach the site yeah, and just get yeah. those really risky situations where he might just kill one, die, but opens the site for his team. So, but while, while Shao is the second guy yeah, coming I mean, in Zipan and go, cleans up. Zipan go boom, basically. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. I mean, as you put it earlier, Lothar, that the sort of disparity uh, of impact between them is so, so, so small. And I feel like they're one of those teams, one of those rare teams, where every single player is a star player, like in, within their own right, but also the fact that they work together as a five, uh, I wouldn't say individually, I mean, in some case, cases, you can say individually they're the five best players in Europe, but as a team, as a unit, as the synergy, as the organization and everything they do behind Angel, um, you know, I personally do feel like that this will be the team to beat in this tournament. Well, I'm not sure if Nolpenki are gonna be the ones to do it, but we are heading on to find, take it away to our caster desk. Thank you very much, Ian Sue, and the guys over on the desk. I am very excited to get on into this one. That cannot be understated because, of course, we have got the Viper being picked. As soon as I saw Xiao locking in his classic from way <laughs> back in beta yeah. of that Phoenix, I knew we were going to see a Viper. And you know what? That's not the only new thing, although we did see it once before from them. I got someone else new right hello, here. Hello. Look at this. Oh my god, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, and actually, anything can happen in this match, as well as this casting desk, because ladies and gentlemen, this is my professional casting debut in Valorant, in a language that's very far away from my regular mountain language that I speak. So if anyone's gonna make fun of anyone today, you should make fun of me, okay? Also, another thing, it's the first time Mitch is gonna carry me and not the other way around. <laughs> listen, listen, we've had a couple of games. I was unlucky, let's accept that and move on. But talking about carrying, I mean, looking at this server, Shao on the Phoenix, man, I'm so excited. Yeah. When we saw this from him last time, I was a little bit concerned. I've not been the biggest fan of Phoenix mm -hmm. since he's come through. The way they use him alongside the Viper, though, is really interesting to me because with that large Viper wall, yeah. they'll use Shao to kind of dissect it a little bit, flash through, get them into yeah. some of those engagements that are harder to do with the more uh, structured or with the slower paced flasher, shall we say. Yeah, and I feel like uh, Phoenix, uh, together with Viper, you've seen Phoenix being used on Bind. Even Sinatra actually used to play Phoenix on Bind yep. in NA. So this is not something you just see here in EU. Obviously, now that we have the Viper in the pool, the wall can be flashed out of. And that's just like how you do when you play Phoenix on your own as well, because you can flash off the wall. And that's such a huge tactic to do in a game like this. Well, here's
here's the thing. Angel said on Twitter that he was a uh, maybe a little bit impressed. I, I, he didn't say that, but I, I could tell maybe a little <laughs> bit. But he responded to Summon FC by saying, you know what? Come back to me when you do it. That is picking Viper without an omen because Angel is the controller <laughs> on that Viper. We're ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. Map one of FPX versus Null Panky going live on front of your very eyes. And it's a pistol round. The wall already down, pre-placed for the A site as FPX will be looking to push down this defense quite quickly. The Phoenix flashing through. Some damage done, but no kill and need to slow them down. But Angel does manage to pick up the frag elsewhere. Zipan creeping in through lamps. He might just catch them off. If that wall goes down, he'll have an angle. There we go. They drop oh. it, but Zeke was ready and waiting with that no pinky 3v3 and you see, and you're seeing this is the thing you know the viper wall has a time so you have to work on that time limit as he gets another kill here it's only two members left in the attacking team one minute on the clock they need to find out if they're going to rotate here or keep just going for the same spot it looks like they have moved, right? They're going over towards middle. Oh, at least one of them is. Angel looking to take that little bit of control oh, there. That's so lucky through wow. the wall. Zeke's been caught. He was low HP, but a headshot from Classic. Well, that's going to do it. Both of the players on FPX are low, though. And on Penky, there's even some armor up on Aaron. They have an advantage in terms of HP, but they might start to second guess themselves. That wall is taking all the info out of their hands. They're not seeing anyone with the camera. Angel has made a little bit of noise, but at left. this point, there's a serious chance that they split up and take one versus one duels. This is where I put the pressure on Jasmine to actually play quite passive when they do push the side. Yeah, and you see Omen has already rotated here because you can play mind games with the wall and the smoke, right? They don't actually know what's going. You can see now they're moving in on the side with 14 seconds left on the clock, and they're actually going to get a plant left. going off, and they need to retake this, and they're left. nowhere to see on site. So this is perfectly executed by FPX. Yeah, and now they're even going to get a little bit of extra time to set up afterwards, that wall providing the cover to back off. They don't have to worry about peak from spawn. They don't have to worry about peak from heaven because of the poison orb they drop it as soon as they've left because they want to save it up for what should be then the uh the post plants the turret spots out one i think they might have the info on both players at this point as well the defuse being tapped they knew full well they heard it at the last yeah. second jumped off didn't even take any damage but it is going to buy some time as angel rotates around to middle there's the snake bite that he had just lined up one he fired it through he keeps them off the second one lands and now they're both ready to take this one fight onto jesmond he's not able to get them both and so FBX take the round. Great use of utility there from Angel. And this is exactly what we saw in the previous game as well with Summon, where you can use a Viper, you can stand so far back as long as you keep your utility, you keep your Snake Bites. And it's very interesting that they actually choose to buy the Snake Bite even on the first round. So you technically sacrifice some armor or a weapon to do this, but you can see how powerful this exactly can be in a situation like this. You know, this setup in particular from the Viper Wall, when I analyzed the previous game that we saw Viper come out in, I actually didn't see them use exactly that. And it was something we were hinting at back then that they didn't feel like they needed to show any strats coming yeah. through the qualifier. So why would they give you everything? It's not easy to anti-strat this team. And I'm sure even since then, they've developed those strats even further. And this is something that's hard to balance. How long do you save your strats? Because you don't want to lose mm -hmm. a game either. Can suddenly you can lose due to momentum. So there's this fine balance on when you show your strats. And we see here there's a nice wall coming out from Angel here. He's already closing off Jet into lamps here. So she has no information if they're pushing it on site. And together with the Sova drone, they're actually going to get some info. He doesn't find anything, actually. Yeah, so he's changed his wall as well. It used to go all the way up into heaven. I Oh, no! Oh. Angel survives that. One HP left in the tank. That is very lucky. That wall used to be a lot further out. It actually went into heaven a little bit, and you would combine it with the uh, poison orb to completely block out that site. I think the problem with it is it gives too much surface area to cover for players pushing back through, and especially when oh. you're up against these weaker buys. Cena gets away with taking down Angel, who had been tagged up before, but I don't see them getting a whole lot more done, especially with Aaron tagged up. They're trying to... Oh, the right-click wow. classics. That's actually what I was leading to. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to manipulate the right-click of the classic. You saw Aaron jump-shotting, yeah. not getting any success, but eventually Shadow, he stepped just that little bit too close. And there you see one of the many reasons why playing a bonus round, round two, not buying phantoms and not buying vandals, can make your economy a lot more safe. So you lose a few players to uh, uh, lucky, or not even lucky, but beautiful play with the classics, but it doesn't really hurt your economy too much because you didn't buy a Vandal or a Phantom. Exactly. Pushing into those sites, you're going to have to take some close range fights. You're going to have to clear those angles. And if there's a classic waiting there, it can sometimes be a 50-50. Oh, yeah. Goes there. You would know. <laughs>
<laughs> I would know. Yeah, especially when I'm already tagged up by seven different shock darts on the way. <laughs> so we have our first actually buy round here from the defending team as FBX are still saving a bit of money here. They're still playing around that economy game, which is probably good. Vac gets a pick up here on Xiao. So this actually looks a lot better for the defending team for the first time. I do really like Vax's aggression. So he pushed all the way through Bath. There was a smoke down, but he was confident to just continue the push because he had that dash to get out of there and go back through the smoke. A very beneficial start. It was actually his own smoke, I believe, that, that he put down, this cloud burst. Yeah, with it's a that, typical play with Jet, isn't yeah. it? Where you like, you get a quick pick, either you dash away or you smoke. It's just really hard to refrag a Jet. Yeah, well, I mean, he did both, right? Dash through the smoke, then you can't even see him to get the trade. Dashing they... through the smoke. <laughs> with one kill on Jet. <laughs> um, so there's a Poison Orb up for Window. Again, this is what we're expecting. Blocking out Heaven, blocking out Spawn. Zeke tries to cross back. He can't get anywhere. A Spectre gonna be upgraded now by Zipan. And there goes the... Oh, no, Angel! Woo! He knew he dropped it, so I'm surprised he's not peeking it or doesn't have a teammate doing that with the gun. So Vax able to at least grab a second as he moves away to sight. There's another oh Angel falling, and it's a three versus two. FPX falling apart at the seams. Shadow has got Shock Darts to play with he's in position over towards bathroom but meadow's gonna have to do a lot he's been spotted now the spike being defused shadow gets pressured so he can't get his shock darts out that nano swarm not quite extending enough and there we go the defuse goes down and the killjoy ultimate expanded as well that was not the best time to use it up that looked so well as well because you can see the execute here. It kind of forces the player playing defensively on A Heaven to push forward, which is really awkward because you have to drop down. Yep. And as soon as you drop down, you have been decaying from the smoke as well. So it's not an ideal situation, but still they managed to come out of top here with some really hero plays by Jet especially. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Vac was the hero of that round. He's got four kills, and they were all in the previous. And the fact that he got out of out of heaven that with the perfect timing. Yeah. I mean, Angel was, he had the poison oh, orb up, on. and then he took out the, um, the snake bite. Yeah. That gave about a two-second window, and he pushed out just in that two really seconds. Sometimes really. life be like that. It's that awkward moment when you're playing a lineup character, and then suddenly you're caught really red-handed. I'm sure you've noticed that a few times. I think Solkus was the, the best example. He yeah. was lining up one of your shock darts, actually, oh, well. trying to get those subs. You had to mention that. <laughs> well, like, that's, that's the thing, right? Sometimes you can just be caught with your pants down, and it costs FBX in this first buy round. Now, I say first buy, they did still have some weaknesses. Now, it's the full He's weaponry, dead. mostly vandals. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This is an important round for both teams as well as the economy starts to get pretty scarce here. So we'll see if they're trying to push into Hookah. There's a smoke coming out. Killjoy utility is being used. They're not really finding any pickoffs yet. So they're slowing down the gameplay, maybe looking for a rotate here as Sova is just lurking in showers, possibly looking for a pickoff here before they decide where to go. This is definitely a lot slower than we've seen the previous rounds. The teleport by Viper, that's Angel moving back over towards bathroom, but they have to contend with Vac. Still with a dash in play, gets one, but now Vac has to try and find his way out of there. He gets out using the cloud bursts and the dash. Left. Back onto the site, now looking to skirmish around them. He's lined himself up, there goes. Okay, so we've actually got Angel popping his ultimate. That'll get them out to site, but they're not able to get the spike across. The ultimate popped the tag there. Angel in for one. Zipman, he popped his showstopper onto a dead body, unfortunately. Jasmine, oh, wow. with the flank of the game. He's left. just picked this round up for free. Great work by Jasmine on the sneak through. Yeah, that's just one of those things that now happens a lot more commonly because in the current meta, you don't have as much flank protection as you used to because normally you would just place your Killjoy turret far back to make sure that no one could push behind you. But it kind of forces you now to play more aggressively and watch your back simply because the turret only works within your limit. And that's why you see the Killjoy turret is literally placed on the middle of the bomb site. So that's a very different play style than what we used to and a lot faster. Well, with no Penky's faster play, on coming up in rounds than what we maybe would have expected. They're on two to two. They're right on the heels of FPX. And at this point, you gotta be a little bit worried, right? That Viper, it's done something, but the yeah. ultimate's already been wasted. Didn't really get them a whole bunch. They managed to, to get to the site, but that flank, that small little oversight is ultimately yeah. what hits them hard. Now you come into this round, obviously no Penky should be winning this as clean as possible. They're up against Sheriffs though, and those weapons can still do some decent damage, especially if they get into that one-shot range. Yeah, like you, you suddenly you enter that cowboy mode where you just feel like you hit everything, and if you're in that 30 meter range, you know, you get those one shots, and they can be so detrimental for the enemy team. So we'll see if they get something here. They're looking for a pick into Hookah. Defending team playing the smart move here, staying far back. They know they're facing a semi-eco. There's no reason to push and play close range. They come in here in the smoke, the push comes 
comes through. There's two picks come down, three picks come down. This seems to be a free round One for Null Thanky. Cena surprisingly stepped into the snake bite there, but in the end, it comes out to be a flawless round. In fact, a prime gaming flawless round. That's who brought you that one. No, Penky. Flawless round was brought to you by Prime Gaming. I like that. Okay, you're going to be in charge of these in future. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look, it's as clean as you'd expect. Jasmine again popping heads even <laughs> through the smoke and yeah. closing it out with the 4K. And I think when you look at a round like that, you've got sheriffs. There's a chance for damage, yeah. but most of the time, that's what's going to happen to you. And, and regardless, they bought Sherry's because they knew they could still afford Vandals on the next round. That's the whole concept of a semi-eco. So they're doing that really well. They can still afford utility. So this is the round that's super important for especially FBX now that their bank is completely empty. Absolutely. This is where the pressure starts to be applied. You don't want to allow Null Panky right back into the game. I love this. I love the fact that we're able to follow these darts now and see exactly how they got there. Coming in through the roof, clearing the close right corner, essentially. The drone making sure the rest of these angles are clear. Up goes the wall. They basically have full control of this A side at this point. It's an easy push. The tags, oh, Phoenix is still fighting. Obviously, because it was his ultimate. That makes sense. I was a little bit lost for a second on that one, I have to say. But Jasmine was a little bit lost coming through the poison orb. He tried to support his teammates who were ready to push, but he got shut down immediately. On the back of that, no Panky will play this one slower. Yeah, absolutely. And you see here how good the recon dart actually is with the Viper wall. You can literally just stand next to the wall and just wait and shoot and do full damage. It's insane how much utility can be used to get these killers. Our shadow gets it back now. Aaron picks Angel out, and it's a three versus three here, so the post-plant play styles are coming in as there are probably going to be some lineups coming in here, possibly. Well, I would assume so. There's a Hunter's Fury pop. Shadow has got the shock darts. Nades are through, but it doesn't matter. All the kills are going their way. Frag after frag, leaving CNED to clutch it on his way to get that operator and leg it, because time is up. Oh, it might actually get an engagement here at the very end, and Zipan shuts him down. There's an operator for the picking, but they don't go for it. And with FPX, you'll notice there, just a small detail, Angel was actually, uh, this is perfect, thank you. You read my mind <laughs> with the replay. Look at how aggressive he was. Now, yeah. you think back a couple of rounds, you might be wondering, why the hell is he doing that? Why isn't he lining up those snake bites in towards the spawn? Because he didn't have any. He'd actually, I, I didn't actually spot if he had them at the start of the round. I presume so, because it's a very cheap loadout, and he wouldn't have invested had he not have been able to afford them. But he'd obviously burnt them up in the early stages of the round. So when it came to those post plans, Viper doesn't provide that much value. Yeah. Definitely one of the agents you can put on the forefront to take those fights. And this is the problem with a lot of these type of agents. You need to have this decision making. Am I going to save my utility for post plant or am I going to use my utility to get to the post plant situation in the first place? Because there's no point saving shock darts yeah. or snake bites if you can never get the bomb down and have a safe post plant situation in the first place. You know, when you're null panky right now, investing into the operator, I want to see a lot from Vac. Himself and CNET are well known for being able to fill that operator role. Yeah. But at the moment, with the exception of that one round where Vac just no, dominated, and it's actually on the Vandal, right? I haven't really seen his off play too much, and I think that that's where FPX are thriving in using that Viper to cut out all the angles. Now, Vac is playing much more aggressive on the A site, oh. but it's not the A site that's being targeted. FPX, they put down their wall for A, and instead they're pushing into B. Angel's already cut through into elbow, holding a very tight angle for anybody pushing up for that map control, but they haven't got Hookah. That was very good proactive approach from Nopengi to push back into the, the window and Hookah to control this part of the map. And the worst part about this is that that's actually where FBX wanted to send the spike, so it's about to be challenged and dropped. Oh my god. And you see how important Hookah control left. is through these teams as they actually play two players in Hookah. So it's clear that they're thinking that this is so Oh, and Supan gets a kill with the showstopper, and Jasmine refrags him as Angel also gets another pick. Another pick for Zeke here, and then just like that, the round is already over. Damn. Wow, that one fell apart pretty quickly. No, Panky, they dropped the spike. They have control two players inside of Hookah. The most interesting thing to me is that Zipan seemed to have preempted the movement of Aaron inside of Hookah. And I say yeah. that because when I saw Aaron in the back, I'm thinking, okay, get away from the wall because yeah. that's exactly where that's going to be coming to. But he shot it for the arch, thinking that Aaron would try to leave and push down the player in mid where the spike was. Yeah. Really smart ultimate placement by Zipan off of basically no information. So yeah. he had to just know exactly what was going on in his opponent's head. And that's his, this is why you know that doing some studies on your opponent's team is so important. Because if you know their play style, you know what to expect. You can send those ults around the corner because you know most likely that's where Cypher's going to be. So 
hopefully that's going to work out. And that's also where the mind games start. What if the other team knows that they've been looking into us? So let's switch it up then. We've just had a beautiful moment. I don't know if we caught it in the third person cam, but those two drones just met in midair, gave a little kiss. One of them did get destroyed though, so it was it was like the Titanic. <laughs> in the end though, they both fall. And we look in towards this push onto the A side, the ultimate from Zip, and no way you can kill CNET. His teammates had already fallen back as well. That's ridiculous. Zipan just shutting him down. FPX controlling the site now. As Zeke is the only one in bath, but he's been pressured from both sides. They haven't got the utility down to block out Heaven, but it doesn't matter. Oh, they're being pushed on the spike, but I don't know how Meadow survives that. I don't know how Meadow gets away with the kill, but in the end, Nolpenki only managed one frag. It was such an interesting play there by Zipan because when CNET had his showstopper, obviously he's going to look to find an easy target. But as soon as Zipan is on top of the box, he can do two things. He can stay on the box, and then the mind game start. Are you going to aim for him at the top of the box? It's actually quite hard to, you mm -hmm. need to get a body hit. Yep. Or are you going to shoot at the ground and hope that Zippen doesn't take the bait or does take the bait and jumps down. And that ended in an ult that was completely wasted. Yeah, he fired into mid, right? But his teammates, uh, like Zipan was calling, okay, they've popped the ult. We know that the Raze is playing on the site, so don't push now, or you're going to run right into a rocket. So really good comms by FPX. And again, Zipan, he used his ultimate excellently in the previous round, and he predicted the ult of CNET in this. Now, I said both of these players, Vac and CNET, are known for their operator play, but it comes as a surprise to me to see the double off deployed oh. and shut down by Angel. Angel as well, Vac on long, he even had support for both headshots. This guy entry frags with Brimstone, he does it with Omen, and for God's sake, he's doing it with the Viper as well. Angel showing no respect here, being the IGL, the freaking puppet master. Still, he just runs forward like a Legion commander and just pops two headshots like it's a walk in the park. That's ridiculous, with the Vandal as well. That's the thing, like, spray transferring with a Phantom, I'll accept with a Vandal that quickly versus an AWP, you get the first shot off then you kill the guy who was there yeah. specifically to trade him just stop it it's nasty and we talked about angel you know the old man in the team he's surrounded by very young players yeah. i see that look you're giving me <laughs> <laughs> but he is he's way above the average age of this team and yet he's still able to deliver he's got that big brain and you know there was always that conversation of uh, is angel going to be able to hold his own in this yeah. you know his counter strike career did start to dip off towards the end and he even said himself and another interview came out recently where he backs it up the fact that he was getting tired of CS. He wasn't excited anymore, but yeah. he's got the passion when it comes to Valorant, and he certainly still has the individual skills. Oh, That's wow. It's just it's just textbook performance. It, even if you're lucky, unlucky there, you get picked off. As Shadow gets Aaron and another round goes to FPX, it seems like to me, in the start, you know, they kind of battled back and forth. Yep. But I feel like right now we're seeing this oh, adaptation. Oh, yeah, let's see this again in slow motion. You have Angel here looking to the left. Gets oh Disgusting. God, so beautiful. Oh, no. Oh, look at this. Look at, him. look at the smirk. That is the happiest I've ever seen Angel look. The man doesn't smile. <laughs> it's it's No, actually, you know what? Genuinely, in Counter-Strike, <laughs> he didn't smile. Okay. I've seen him win. I've seen him win games and just kind of go, eh, okay, we won. He's so passionate about this game, and you can see it on his face in moments. Yeah. Moments like that. That's absolutely true. And we see here, Angel is actually using his utility here to push up on B long. So that's probably one of those situations we talked about earlier where he doesn't necessarily save it for the post ban situation because it, you, it gives you a lot of uh, real estate to work on. Oh, oh my god! On. And the pre fire through the smoke. That's insane, Angel. What are you doing? <laughs> just, just, what? Somebody stop this guy. Please. Thank you, Zipan. He's like, you know what? You've got too many kills, old man. I'm coming in. So I like that usage as well. Something that FPX have long been known for is committing utility towards taking ultimate orbs because they are very very valuable oh, now I angel has his old because he just got two kills yeah but he was going to go forward i presume pop down his poison orb of course oh, the benefit God. being you can pick it up yeah and then grab his ultimate from that at least steal the orbs away from his opponents and you can see that shao has actually gone through showers and they've mained our bath as we call it now and taken that control as well although aaron picked up a kill the problem for him is he's in a 1v4 he and is. also he's been shot in the head by shao yeah <laughs> and one thing i wanted to point out was the synergy between Angel and Zipan there. It was almost like, you can see it here, he gets one kill, he gets another one, and then as soon as he's like, okay, mate, I need to reload Zipan. Can you take the next one for me, please? <laughs> He's there. I'm kind of missing. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. That's good. It is so, actually the second he runs out yeah, of ammo. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like Gandalf telling Frodo, like, you know what? I got you for a little while. 
Now you take over, you know? <laughs> it's like three. I'm on, I'm on 10 bullets, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. In comes Zipan. He's there to save the day. That was beautiful. I love it. I love it. Seven oh. to three. FBX, they're dominating. Yeah, look, you see Null Penky give us the scrappy fight the desk was hoping for, the fight that we were hoping for, but then it falls apart a little bit. Xiao, interesting little Molly going through. That'll clear out the left side of Hookah, but they don't try to capitalize on it, right? And I wouldn't say the smoke has scared them back. I think that's them telling uh, Null Penky okay we're gonna fight you nobody moved from the left side so unless this is like a passive hold in hookah up on top of the box they're not there at all and with that map control out of their hands you know they're gonna be slower to rotate leaving the a side open for the taking that's a interesting ult Absolutely, as Xiao comes in here with his ultimate as well, gets a pick up on Jasmine, he keeps pushing into side, he doesn't find anything else, as of course they know to hold back as soon as the Phoenix ultimate is popped out. CNET pops Shadow as well, and the Operator guy is already taken out, the Sobol comes out as well, 4 versus 4, almost gets another one, this is insane! It is indeed. Yeah, Angel caught around the edge of his ultimate, though, so that's going to fall. That's a lot of map control disappearing with his death and the man advantage swinging into the favor of Nalpenki. The swing comes all the way through, but Vak, well, he didn't have any support. No one was there to trade him. Meadow starting seconds, to create yeah. some space. He goes on through the TP as the B site is going to be what they look for. Xiao on a longer rotate, but the TP... It won't be heard. Or maybe it will, actually. I think they might have gotten there in time. Either way, you'll presume it's in elbow or long. So they just go ahead and pop another ultimate to fully commit towards it. Xiao, thinking about this round. He's in an intense focus. Angel also thinking about this round. <laughs> it was interesting. You like yeah. to see inside their minds. Uh, Angel was just watching his teammates, not calming too much. I like it. Big thunk. <laughs> <laughs> Dead men don't talk. I was, was kind of questioning myself there as the round ended. But yeah, here we go. So the plant went down after we saw the lockdown in play to push those players out of position. Aaron's just shooting at the bomb in case this kills your utility. Meadow and Xiao. Nice crossfire to trade out Zipan. And now Zeke. He's in a 1v2, but both of these players are low. Xiao going out with the molly. Doesn't use to heal instead pops it on top of the spike making sure it cannot be diffused and zeke's got no choice but to run for the hills and save this weapon through to the next round heartbreaking considering it's now the last round of the half fbx have just really turned on the, the buttons here now as they're just they're just really playing so it's so beautiful to see all these refrags you have you have these perfect this is from the cs background you know they're holding their angles as soon as he starts to shoot the guys that are in elbow he gets peaked from garden from b long and it's there's just no way that you can turn 90 degrees yep. and, and and kill that guy it's just so perfect and it's just beautiful to see really he couldn't even get the the two kills in towards elbow either that was the thing although they were blocking each other the player behind was just about to die, so it ended up working out pretty okay. On 8-3, to three, Null Penky, now they're coming up to, to give it a shot. They want to get themselves into a position now where they can at least win the pistol round in the next and close that scoreline in. They need this round. And it starts out with FPX again seizing control of longer, stopping any sort of early aggression. I do yeah. like that spray. That Viper spray, I've seen that trick so many people into shooting it. <laughs> <laughs> you also see here the classic Sova drone coming into uh, showers here. He doesn't really find any information, but at least he knows that there's no one else there as Shadow's lurking and gets back through this freaking wall. What's going on? And then he gets refragged by Zeke as well. Angel takes out Jasmine as well. And this is just another round where suddenly everything gets out of hand. They're winning their duels, taking the refrags. It just seems like you can't kill one without dying yourself. Yeah, Go just look at the position by Xiao. Uh, CNET has got to be hitting his table after that. Why would Xiao be there? at that time because he's ready to trade his teammate out there goes angel closing out the half in excellent fashion nine to three the fragging entrying igl smoker supportive controller this guy is absolutely unbelievable and he's the brains behind the operation taking these four young guns and molding them into the squad and the well-drilled squad that he wants them to be this this just makes me so proud, you know, because you know, let's 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 uh, address the elephant in the room here. We know that you are young, and we know that I'm not, <laughs> but you can still make it work through synergy. Well, you know what, Zipan star of the show, the big name. This old team was called Zipan Go Kill for good reason. 14 frags. Angel playing the smoker, the controller, the player that will play post plant far more frequently than Zipan will, and disengage from the action. 
13 kills. You know, it's it's phenomenal to see this guy still deliver because I've watched him in Counter-Strike for such a long time. But we need to be watching them over towards bathroom as Nolpanky have started out the pistol fight by getting some aggressive control there. They pushed in, but they have lost a player along the way. That puts FBX on the back foot in these kind of situations. Ghosts are plenty for FBX to try and manipulate the non-armored opponents that are in the hands of Nolpanky. But they've got the site. They've got the spike plants and a good start at least now in the 4v3. Absolutely, and we see her shadows just lurking around into lamps here, trying to find a pickoff here. It's really important as Jet is... Oh, they're gonna get pushed! He gets one! Does he get one more? He gets refragged by Aaron. It's three versus two, or Zeke is very low on HP. They need to find out how to retake this side. There's not much utility left here. As Xiao just gets a very clean headshot here. Mendo also trying to win his duel. Owen pushes close. Mendo gets him as well. It's a one versus one situation. It cannot be any closer. A Cypress camping with a cam session on site here. Trying to just duel Mendo. Will he win the brain game? That's the question. Oh my goodness. Three HP. So close yet so far for FPX. Three health is what defines it as uh. Nolpanky pick up the round. One little point I think that we can bring up. When you're going in for that fight in Lamps, yeah. you're actually, and it might be quite counterintuitive to some of the some of the viewers out there who don't know the game that well, but the free pistol, the one in the hands of Shadow, is actually probably better to have oftentimes yeah. than the Ghost for that kind of fight because the right click lets you put three bullets out and at that range, it's basically a shotgun because it's pinpoint accurate. Not just that, but also the fact that a lot of them, they don't buy armor in the first round. Yes. So you need to hit one chest shot, one headshot, and they're dead. Yeah, the right click makes that very easy to do. 105 damage, if my boomer brain is not mistaken. There we go. Big brain calculation calculations on the spot. That's why we've got you here, Jonas. He can calculate a lineup for any position from any position. That's a selling point. And if you don't believe me, you just check out his Discord. He, he's got <laughs> them all there. Plug it, plug it for you. Slash average Jonas, oh, yeah. no. I've, I've, had a, I've had a long, long look over there, and I know a lot of the professional players have too. Shout out Hiko. When we look <laughs> at the 9-4 to four score line, and FPX, they're looking for double digits, but with pistols in their hand, they're unlikely to get it. Meadow, I think he's hit the edge of his mouse mat there. <laughs> right click the wall, just in case. <laughs> Maybe it's like a, an alpha play. Like, I'm over here. Come get me. Oh, my goodness. Zeke gets Angel here. It looks, you know what? I'm kind of glad that they won the round, so we might have an eBay game. And Zeke, Mando gets two with the classic. What's oh, going no. on here? There's no way they're going to win this with just pistol, is there? Please, no. I mean, I said it was the alpha play, but maybe getting all these kills is Meadow just about misses the right click, but this could be a 1v2. Instead, it's pretty unwinnable for Shadow. Okay. He does get shut down. What, I, what I'll say there is that the smoke placement from Aaron was really nice. You're yeah. up against pistols. You don't need the turret to be harassing you as well, so he just smoked up on top of it. It also creates that extra paranoia, potentially, of uh, him Shadow stepping into it. Obviously, with the turret there, he can't really do that without you finding out, but it's a nice touch just to take away some of the utility that was at play. The problem is they then just ran at a classic close range and let him shred them. Yeah, and that's the thing. Even when you play a semi-eco against classics, it's a pretty even duel in close combat. So when you're playing attack here and you bought Spectrus, you still want to play long range, even though Spectre is not the best long range weapon in the world. Exactly right. I, I, I do I do always question, you know, in those kind of rounds, how else you can clear a position like that on site. Yeah. I think it was just really <gasps> good positioning from Meadow. CNET, he's known to be up close. He's going to drop the boom bot and continue to try, try and take the fight. Boom bots get a little kiss to each Mega other on the wars. way by. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Robot wars. Yeah, that's oh. the word, sorry. There we go. The nade over actually <gasps> going to do some damage. Could take Jasmine down, but he gets away just in time. They actually all get away through the teleporter, the unique selling point of this map. That TP, and I I love the wall that uh, is actually put down by Angel. He's dead, though, so it can't be used. It goes through the TP to cover mid and all of B. Oh Meadow, God. though, he's actually managed to catch out Vac, who was going for a very early aggressive stance. Remember, this is a bonus round for Null. Penky running through a molly, never ideal. Two players spotted. Did he tag him through that as well? Either way, CNET and Jesmond very, very low for this retake, but Jesmond's able to take a wall bang frag to put a mad advantage in their court. Meadow's just sneaking around in the smoke here. They still have quite some time to take the bombs. They need to figure out, probably wait out the smoke here. There's a lot of players with low HP CNET, and Jesmond can barely shoot their toe, they're dead. There's, there's just, this is just a really hard retake. They're gonna play super safe as well. They probably have lineups for this, don't they? Possibly. Well, actually, as you say that, let's not talk about who's dead or not, but... Uh, <laughs> I was just, I was just looking. <laughs> yeah. A cypher cage lineups or what? <laughs> 
I was I was doubting myself and thinking Jonas knows lineups for Silva. What else does he know that I don't? But yeah, well, either way, it doesn't matter because Meadows getting away with his rifle. He was going to save because they just won those two aim duels to start it out. And so we'll end up with nine to six. Little little note, you know, you saw at the end of the round there, Omen from the other side of the map just threw a smoke up in the air. I always yeah. like to do that. It's like little fireworks for you. That is true. And now we're actually on nine six. This is getting uh, close, so it's really exciting. <laughs> Can we, it's so strange to see how well teams are performing on attack now, because I think it's more natural to have these set plays you practice on yep. attack, right? With the Viper wall and everything. So it's just so cool to see how maps are not necessarily that really defender sided idea. anymore. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just... If you, uh, there we go. I've rolled the dice. FPX are going to win this round. I've seen it so many times where they're able to capitalize with these stingers up close. We've seen it in this tournament more times than I can count. But for FPX in particular, already able to capitalize in rounds where they had just classics. Now there's that slight upgrade. They're on the defense. They're turtling in. They're four-man stacking the A side as well. Now Penky, two players through bath. If they commit to this, they're in trouble. You've already got the Hunter's Fury committed. Zeke gets tagged. Zeke doesn't get finished off. And look at that. Vax baited out by him. He tries to dash in to take down the Sova now realizes there's players up close, but he's able to take the frags. And so it looks like the die have lied to me as it is a four versus two. And all the players on Null Penky need to make big mistakes and die to these weaker weapons in order for FBX to win it. And this is probably the first time you've ever oh, lost a uh, dice roll, isn't it? As Shadow gets yes, but it's still a two versus three. It's still possible Last to retake this. Mm, maybe not. Oh, the dash comes out. Shadow's still lurking around into <laughs> lamps here tries to find something with the recon dark but they're playing this perfectly they have no reason to peek he's just he's just out man at this point there's like there's no way he can win this as aaron just does a run and gun that's what you want to see so vac in this round uh oh i thought from his positioning that he'd actually popped his ultimate but it seems to still be uh there for him i was wondering how i didn't hear it but that would have been a, a a reasonable time to pop the blade storm because things did get a little bit dicey. Yeah. You know, they're pushing into a heavier stack. There was the dash as well, but with a stinger in hand, I guess it's the perfect weapon to really take those kinds of engagements. I would question that push by Jesmin versus yeah. a low buy. Even if it's a classic, we already talked about yep. how much damage that can do, and you're running in giving him a van. I like how you said dicey just after you lost your a dice roll, but let's <laughs> not dive further into that. As we have a full buy from both teams here, and CNET is lurking. He wants to find his pickup as the one-way smoke from Viper is out. Doesn't really find anything yet, but possibly we can see an A push coming through here as there's not much happening on B side as the Sobold comes out, gets two tags, 80 damage on two defenders here. Oh, it's a good start with Angel dropped as well. There's the one way no longer needing to be worried about. They're winning every duel on the way forward. FPX, this is a full buy and they've not gotten a kill. Back goes down, little bit of a tickle onto Zipan. But a three versus four. And a tough position to get back into, especially with Aaron. Look at him. He's oh, yeah. And it's just so hard now that teams are so good at, at playing post plants as they're sneaking up on A Heaven. They probably don't know that Aaron is actually camping on top as he swings out and gets Zip and really well played. There gets another one as well. Meadow has an impossible task here as he also gets taken out by Zeke. And just like that, we're actually at 8 9. So Aaron in that position is even more threatening if he has his paranoia to go on down yeah, that alleyway. Absolutely. He didn't have it at least, but still managed to pick up the double. It's just a surprise element, isn't it? Because the way he plays outside heaven means that his team needs to watch every other angle mm -hmm. because he's so exposed to a short and showers. So this just means that they have a very set idea of how they want to play this post plant. And the only angle he needs to worry about is exactly a heaven. Yeah. So they, they exactly that they played it around him. That was the, yeah. the focal point of it. Now, what I'll talk about for this thing, you might think we're going on a player comms. The pistol round must have started by now, surely. But no, the round hasn't because FPX have taken a tactical pause. Now, they are one of the few teams that will actually do this if they feel like they're under threat. We've seen it a couple of times from them in the past. And it, it worries me. You know, teams like G2, for example, they I don't think they've ever called. I don't know. They might not know we have tactical pauses in Rumor the game. Rumor has it they don't really talk 
outside they just shout that's what i've heard at least but they shout well. very well it's like quality you know it's like qualified shouting it's kind of like singing opera you know it's just very professional shouting i will say they they've started to work with the coach now they, they've got a little bit more tactical depth uh, being worked on at least uh more so than they did back in the olden days but i think at the same time there's always going to be that element to g2 pure confidence pure aggression but, but that's why it's so much fun to watch them play exactly uh, well at times the, for, for the first half of the game we watched maybe not so much the second when we look at fbx though this is a good position nine to eight they're gonna tie it up or when we look at no panky rather they're starting to, to oh. close in that gap it was looking terrible for them they were nine three down they won the pistol they start to really just amp up their performance in fpx they're under threat straight away in this round you have to identify <gasps> the fact that they're not uh going to be able to match up in these fights again we're seeing the sheriffs in play but on the defense if you run into these pistols you can be torn apart Absolutely, and you should not just take it lightly when someone buys sheriffs. Like, we've seen it time and time again. You feel so confident because you're playing Phantoms and Operator, and then suddenly there's the freaking Sheriff of Doom just one-tapping you, and that's that can really change around, especially economy-wise. So you notice as well, Vac has been holding on to his ultimate for quite some time, and Get I really like way. it. Well, he's popped <laughs> 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 The caster curse. <laughs> that literally, he's holding... <laughs> Why in this round, Vac? I know he's got an operator, so what I was going to say was you can you can up the pace in a round and go for a faster play, but I fundamentally left. disagree with popping it now. This is the worst time he could have done it, and I'll give you the exact reason. You've got your smokes, right? Your cloud burst. You can help to set up on the execute, let your teammates go first. If they start to die, pop your ult and try to recover the round, sure. But versus a low buy like this, maybe they suspected it to be a force, I'm not sure. But considering the buy he's up against, it definitely wasn't the best time. Because when you're up against a full buy, you can pop that ultimate and then entry for your team. If you get pressured or cut off in a close situation, you can do that. But look, either way, it's a flawless round. But to me, that's an ultimate just thrown away. Absolutely. And what kind of flawless was that, sir? I believe it was a prime gaming flawless. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Flawless round brought to you by Prime Gaming. I'm too in love with the way you do that, man. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not doing a single call out. It's all on you from now on. But <laughs> any primus, any primus over there. <laughs> so at nine to nine on the board, <laughs> I still can't get over that, man. He held onto it for like ten rounds. I'm like, well, he's been holding onto it for quite some time. He won't use it here. Pops his ultimate. That second. Thanks a lot, Vac, for making me look like a fool. But at least you're a handsome fool. Oh, thank you very much. First time I've heard that. Uh, not, not the full part. For <laughs> FBX, Shadow has picked up the opening duel. So this guy playing the Sova now, he's on that operator, and he's finding the frag. But that was over towards the A site. That's not where the push is coming in. Nelpenki, they're selling that little bit of a fake. They've lost a player mid. Their Cypher's making some noise. And now rotating all the way back over towards the B site. I actually thought he'd pick up his, uh, his tripwire, but he's leaving it there. Perhaps there's going to be lurking for a very long time as Xiao picks up one. He's ulted out. Oh. Seen it. Massive play to eliminate Angel as well. And he just keeps going. Nothing can stop this man as Nolpenki <laughs> looks set to take the advantage. There's the lockdown destroyed. And we could be looking at double digits in the lead for Nolpenki. Oh, a player spotted in the back of the oh. site. He's not hit by that ult, though. Nade goes through to deal some damage. It doesn't even tickle him. Seen it on four. Looking for the ace. Moving out towards the spawn. He's He's not greedy, though. He's not swinging just yet. Gets baited by the shots. Good play by Zipan. Still two more to pick up, though. Aaron smokes him off. He has to jump out of this. It's a risk. Oh. And he runs right into the bullets of Jasmine. Putting it up now. 10 to 9 as Nalpenki take the lead. CNET was just being the Hulk here. He literally just ripped his shirt off and was like, this round is mine. And you can even see that, by the way. You can see this here. He gets an oh. ultimate kill. He gets Angel. He just pushes through the smoke, gets Killjoy as well. He knows the ultimate is there. He has no choice. Exactly. He needs to push in and destroy the Killjoy ultimate. And then, of course, when you already have a 4K, there's one guy left. Keep you got to go for that ace. So what I'll say as well is, though, he heard the shots in Hookah and probably presumed his teammate was in a fight. And yeah. before you could even communicate it, he was swinging out to help. Oh, That's how yeah. good of a player he is, how good of a teammate. He got punished there, but I do like the, the point that you pointed out that he was going in to take down the lockdown, right? That it wasn't just bravado when he ran into elbow. Yeah. Sure, 
a bit of it was, <laughs> but at the same time, there was purpose to it. It was definitely necessary. Angel making use of the oh, judge. He did this not is, see the drone. This is massive. He's the up, drone did he's not see close. Angel. He drops it, and there's the kill to Vac. An opening, and with low HP on Jasmine, this is a fantastic start for FBX into a low buy round. They've also got Xiao playing over towards who can oh up my he goes, God. and down goes CNED. Oh my god, this is such beautiful performance on a low buy. They have two sheriffs, and now Xiao has a phantom, you know? It's five versus three. This is very winnable on a round where they literally spent almost no money. They were setting up for the next round, right? They were happy to give 11 rounds over to Nolpenki, but instead... It's looking like they could win this one. Definitely, Jesmond, he's got a, a sliver of HP. Uh, any of these weapons will take him down instantly. You've got shock darts up, snake bites, full utility for Xiao. Xiao's even got his ult. He's going to pop this. He hears the players left. on the other side. He's got oh, flashes to God. play with. No, he's not going to pop it because he's in a bad position. Oh! For afterwards. There's the first. Here's a player up close. He's dancing around the cage and finding a 3K. Disgusting round by Xiao. And you see it again. Every time someone gets fragged on FPX, there's a refrag from the 90 degree angle. It's just so often that they hold these perfect refrag. I hear you see it again. He dodges the Sova drone. He gets, I don't even know how he gets back from that range with a shotgun. That's maybe a question to Riot, but you know, <laughs> it still happened. It's the RNG, right? Sometimes it's on your side and sometimes it brings you a Playzilla thrifty round. And that's exactly what FPX were able to get to put them back up to 10-10. Double digits for both teams. That is heartbreaking, though, if you're Null Panky. Not the kind of buy you want to be losing out to. And the judge, it can be so infuriating to play yeah. against. Playzilla Trifty. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. I'm loving it. But look at Vac. Oh he is not God. loving life right now. He got pressured into the corner, had to use a cloud burst, but ultimately did manage to dodge the ultimate of Xiao. They've been spotted out that they are pushing up in towards Bath. That's giving clear intent of it being a push towards the A site. On that, you'll probably rotate oh. one player pretty soon but that's a disgusting shock dart. Damn. Doesn't get as much damage as it could have, and I love that he then changes it up for the second. I don't actually usually see them from this angle, but damn, that was... Uh, it, <laughs> and, and as you say, it's really smart to shoot the second one somewhere else, because it, unless you are, like, literally iron, you will, like, have to move. Because he's not going to... Oh, know. he's going. He's going. He's sending it. Following him through the TP. Hello. Oh, my God. And goodbye, Aaron. No. Angel knows what's going on. He's now managed to pick up a Phantom going in for the range no, no, no. duel. Takes down Jasmine. This is ridiculous. Back in a 1v4. No Panky again falling apart at the seams. And what wins it for them here is Angel playing close with his one way and with left. his judge. Oh my god, if Vac, there's, I hate to say that, but there's no way he wins this in a 1 versus 3, is there? He needs to pick up the bomb, they're both, oh, and you see that once again, it's just this coordinated team peaks every time. They always do the peak when they have someone else guarding their back, it's just this beautiful, almost like camaraderie if you'd like, and here you see Angel killing Cena as he jumps in, and he, <laughs> poor Aaron, he's sitting there with 1 HP, he's like, I know what's about to happen, but he's gonna see my toe and I'm done. Yeah, oh, you're gone, you're gone, that judge, it's gonna to get one of those shots on you. <laughs> you know the thing here? I actually think that was really smart by Angel to reposition. He played yeah. from that position up close if you're the attacker on the right side. I don't think we have a name for that position. Do we? Uh, which one? It doesn't matter. But basically, he played as you ran up through mid on the right side. He played there where he found the success with the judge before. This time, he switches over to close lamps, and that blast pack would have left the player safe had he have been where he was before. But instead, he was there waiting, going, hey, I have legs. I'm over here so. now. <laughs> Easy kill. Follow through the TP, chasing down the spike, getting the frags. So well played by Angel. I love this ultimate as oh well. It's maybe a little bit too deep for my liking, but it does mean that they'll be super low HP when they come out. Angel Angel forced back and oh. being pursued. They know now he's not in his ulti and he gets dropped by Vax Swing. That's just a really important way to tag the Viper inside the ultimate. Shadow gets seen in here as well. Vax refracts Shadow as well. It's three versus three. This is such an important round as the plant goes down with one minute left on the clock. Zippin gets back as well. Shadow gets Zeke as well. It's a one versus two situation. This is actually doable. Oh my god. Zippa needs to stay alive because Meadow is on the rotate. He's coming in to help. And look at that. Zippa actually falls back so that he can't be pushed. But they oh, oh, what? what a flick! He wasn't even looking at him and he flicks over faster Are you than I can register. Me? 
That's ridiculous. And 12 rounds now for FBX off the back of it. The trade wasn't even needed. He doesn't need teammates. It's zip and go kill, for God's sake. Match that reminds point. me of when Pansy was talking about the boomer to zoomer ratio, because that's definitely <laughs> a zoomer play. That's <laughs> that Unless the is. zoomer is you, but let's not talk oh, about that. Oh, come on. Come on, you're going to do me like that? <laughs> hey, even Xiao is quite a bit younger than me. This man is... Oh, sorry, Zipan. Zipan. He's 18 years old. I was just checking it out. I thought he was even younger than that. But you know what? With those reaction times? Yeah. I don't know, dude. I feel like I'm 90. That's 12 to 10. FPX on the verge of victory here on map one. No, Penky have made them fight for it. Remember, they were down 9 to 3. And again, the narrative of the attacker-sided maps is really coming through loudly here. Absolutely, and now we have another tactical pause here, so probably won't, maybe we'll see some change-ups to how they play. It's clear that they've been kind of, you know, brutaling here back and forth, trying to find out what the other team is doing. You see this when Angel was playing, and like you said earlier, he was repositioning and how that affects how they predict their gameplay. So they're starting to get into each other's heads. We're still in the same map, so we don't know what's going to happen in round two, but this is definitely to try to find a way to beat the way they're playing right now. I mean, look, this is the best time for, well, maybe not the best time, let's say, but it could be the only time to get that tactical pause in. If you're Null Panky, one round, one slip up, and they are out of this. They need two in a row. It's doable, but look at that buy. Now, you'll notice that Vac doesn't actually have a weapon. Never mind. He didn't have a weapon, then the UI updated, and now he does. So as we come in towards this one, <laughs> I was wondering what was going on. He's got the operator to play with. There's rifles along the rest, and CNED has actually, surprisingly, is the one that puts himself down to a Spectre. That means faster play. That means ultimate Ooh. coming through. He doesn't see anybody. Oh my and God. can't even fire off the rocket before he's dropped. Zeke, though, quick to trade and get two. He doubles it up, gets the man advantage for Null Panky. This is doable. The nade, perfect to Jesmond, forces him out of position. Zipan, good for one. Ultimate online, going through with the rocket. Good. Goodbye, sweet dreams. Jasmine hit in the face by that, and that's the spike dropped right in the middle of the site. It's looking like it's all done and dusted. And as Aaron falls, it is confirmed. 13 to 10 as FBX take map number one of this best of three series. Wow. What a like this this match, we said we said that we thought FBX would probably not steamroll this, but definitely play a, but this was this was so even. Yes. This could have gone each team so many close rounds. One versus ones, clutch situations. So it's just a Red Bull clutch situation if you'd like. But anyway, <laughs> it's just, this is this is going to be, I, I'm, I'm so excited for map two already. Yeah, absolutely. Can we just skip all the breaks, the analyst <laughs> desk? Can we just go? Angel, you ready? Let's go, baby. And because the, the gameplay was so clean. We saw yeah. individual plays, but absolutely. that's not what it was all about. It was the situations leading up to them that almost are more exciting in some ways. For FPX, though, this is the victory that they wanted, the one they needed. Now they're 1-0 up their Viper and their uh, Phoenix play that we yeah. had seen trialed before, but that was when they were already a map up. This time, they had the balls to do it early on, and it's worked out for them. And also, I wanted to highlight the fact that almost, if you looked at the stats board, almost every player was pulling their weight on, on both teams. Like, there wasn't anyone standing out that much. Of course, they're all standing out in their duels. Like, Zip and had some of these crazy flick shots and stuff. But overall, both of these teams, they just they just look like a well-oiled machinery. Something that you don't really see in the solo queue, at least. I mean, it's something that we said, though, in the in the pre-show of the whole tournament. We mentioned yeah. Nolpenki as a serious contender. Absolutely. I think they've gotten the short straw up against FBX in particular. This is a tough matchup for them. Absolutely. But they are still a team that have put together two insane individuals of CNET and VAC. Yeah. You've got a whole lot backing them up. They've got the tactics. They've got, they put the work in versus FPX, the most intelligent, tactically minded team, I'd argue in the world, but in <laughs> Europe at least, let's say. <laughs> let's stay grounded in reality until we get that world finals land. For now though, folks, we've got to go to a break. It's been a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun casting with you, Absolutely, Jonas. Absolutely, sir. But it's not done and dusted yet. We'll be back in a little bit with the analyst desk and map number two afterwards. One enemy remaining. You One enemy remaining.